Hello everyone. I would like to thank you for attending today's webinar, Understanding Leadership Style. Your Cogno moderators today are Pia Bernardo, Cogno's training consultant, and myself, Kat Amato, the Sales and Marketing Director at Cogno. If you have any questions or any training needs that we can help you with, please feel free to note our emails and phone numbers and contact either Pia or myself and we'll be happy to help you. And as a thank you for attending today's webinar, we are offering everyone an exclusive 30% discount off of all of the courses that we have available in our marketplace from today's host author, InSpark. After the event, we will be emailing everyone the discount code so you can take advantage of the savings. We will also include a link to the webinar's recording that we'll post on our YouTube channel. So I, I'd like to also mention that Cogno has a robust training university solution available to each of you at no cost. The training university makes it easy for your staff to find training they need and a breeze for your training admin to manage employee training. Some of the many features of the training university include the ability to curate your own library of training to make available to your staff. You can even upload your own internal training documents. Your staff can then send a request to your assigned admin, which can be approved or declined by the admin. And the admin can also assign specific courses to users. The training university comes with full tracking and reporting capability, and you can save up to 30% off of any of the training courses from the Cogna Marketplace. So again, this is available to you with no upfront cost. Simply email us or leave a message in the chat feature of the GoToMeeting panel, and I'll send you information and get you all set up. So in addition to courses from our host author, InSpark, we also have thousands of courses in virtually every business topic available in our marketplace, including human resources, software, business management, and soft skills training, to name a few of the topics available. So be sure to check out our website to search the options. Today, we're very proud to have with us Mark Hemingway. Mark is the current CEO of InSpark Interactive, he has a Bachelor's of Science in Information Technology and a Master's Degree in Educational Technology. Over the past 15 years, Mark has seen firsthand how leadership style can impact the morale and engagement from small to mid-sized development teams all the way up to the entire organizations. So it is with great pleasure today that we welcome Mark Hemingway. Mark? Okay, thanks Kat. <clears throat> yeah, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, when, when Cogno reached out to ask me to do a webinar, um, the reason I picked leadership style is because um, I think that's the one I've messed up with the most. Um, so I have a lot of experience on what not to do, and we'll talk about some of that today. Um, but to get started, <clears throat> some of the things that we're going to cover um, in our presentation. First, we're going to talk about why leadership style. Why does that even matter? And I'm going to let you know how I kind of got interested or <laughs> how I messed up and then realized that this was something I needed to understand a little bit better. Um, then what we're going to do is we're going to have a little assessment. So everybody's going to kind of just figure out what category of leadership style they fall into. Again, this is general. We're high level. But we're going to do that just kind of as a basis for the um, webinar today. Um, then what we're going to do is go through and I'm going to define and explain the different leadership styles um, so that you know, you'll kind of understand where you're at and get some ideas of what goes along with that leadership style and then um, learn about some of the other styles of leadership and maybe how those might be beneficial for you. Um, after that, uh, I'll talk a little bit about some considerations for developing your own leadership style, um, some ideas for implementation. Uh, what maybe to do and what not to do. And then um, I'm going to give you some resources for some more information. So um, obviously by the end of today you're going to be so excited about leadership style that you're going to want to go learn everything you can about it and I'll give you a few more resources that you can go um, learn more on. And then finally at the end uh, we'll have time for a Q&A. So question and answer time. Um, save up your questions to the end and I'd be happy to answer them. So with that let's jump in. So first of all, why 
why leadership style? Um, leadership style has to, has affects the employees, and it affects the management. Um, and when you can develop your leadership style to work with a team, um, your employees feel more engaged. Um, they have a higher level of job satisfaction, um, and it's just an overall better environment for them. <clears throat> okay. And then for managers and leaders, um, why develop leadership style? Why do you want this type of environment? Well, you have these people that work for you, right? And you directly influence some parts of their lives. Um, these are people you want them to be happy. You want them to progress and grow. And a lot of that can be either enhanced or hindered by how you're managing or by how you're leading them. Um, and with an appropriate leadership style, um, you'll find that your environment is more productive. Um, it's more cohesive. Um, your teams tend to work better together. And that's, that's really what we want in um, a business setting is teams that work well together. Um, so for me, uh, I guess if we back up a little bit, um, <clears throat> when I, we started in Spark maybe six years ago. We actually, well, we actually started about 10 years ago as a small multimedia shop. And um, we were building a lot of e-learning, so we kind of rebranded into InSpark about six years ago, but I had my development team that I was over. Um, so I kind of ran this development team, and that that picture there, that's how they were, right? The uh, <laughs> the stock photo of the happy people. Um, so <clears throat> my team was uh, great. I mean, we had a lot of fun together. Um, everybody jumped in. They got their job done. We worked hard. We had fun. Um, but as things were growing, we had to start looking at bringing some more people onto the team. Um, so we hired somebody new and brought them into the team. And after about two weeks, this is kind of how our new employee was. Um, sad stock photo guy on the side of the road, right? I mean, he was he was not happy, and it wasn't clicking. And I, and I wasn't sure why, okay? Because I was looking at him saying, the rest of the team is loving this, and things are going really well, and I don't know why this isn't working for you. Um, and so as I was trying to kind of figure this out, you know, and Spark is a course company. We develop content. We got into leadership training um, because we had some clients that wanted that. And so we started developing these, working with these industry experts, um, you know, to gather this information. And we worked with one corporate trainer who probably, she'd been corporate training for about 15 years. And she did about the first 15 courses for us was from her content that she'd researched and been um, delivering to people. Um, now, as a training company, you kind of, you build courses across everywhere. You get a lot of random knowledge. Um, we kind of joke because we did a course on dining etiquette, and the person who did the dining etiquette course, they were obviously really excited about dining etiquette, and they were really thorough, and we got into this course, and apparently there's this thing, a fish knife, Apparently, there's a knife that I didn't know about that I was supposed to be cutting my fish with this entire time. And so we joked about that in the office, like, oh, the fish knife. Well, it happened that one of our guys was down in San Francisco uh, meeting with some clients, and he ordered fish, <laughs> and they brought him out a fish knife. And so we got this text back um, with this picture um, of the fish knife, and in all caps at the bottom, it said, fish knife. And so we were all excited that what he thought was his random useless knowledge she'd actually actually used. But <clears throat> that same thing kind of happened to me with leadership style, right? Because I had my employee, I didn't know what to do. I assumed it was his problem, obviously not mine. How could be my problem? And then this course on leadership style comes through. And so <clears throat> I was reading through this course on leadership style, getting it ready to um, be built, and it just kind of clicked. And I had this fish knife moment where I just want to yell leadership style with all exclamation points because I realized that <laughs> it wasn't the problem with the employee. Uh, it was me and how I was managing him. Um, so that's really where I started and got into leadership style and started to read about it and learn about it. <laughs> it was because of this employee and this course that came across and I took that as an opportunity to learn something. Um, so we'll talk about that a little bit more um, later on about how I changed that situation and kind of what happened there. So you you will will not leave you hanging. You'll get to hear the end of that. Um, 
but that started me down to learning about leadership style and how it can be a powerful thing within an organization and how it can help teams and how it can help individuals. So that's why I was kind of excited to talk about it today because I've seen it make a difference. Um, before we jump in, just a couple, couple things. Obviously, this is going to be a general discussion on leadership style. Okay, we can't go too much in depth on any of these in the <laughs> short amount of time that we have. Um, because <clears throat> there's so much out there about leadership style. Um, there's over probably a million unique styles of leadership, and that's because you think of all the individuals. I would say that everybody has their own style of leadership. But what they found is that they can group those into about five categories. So there's five general categories of leadership that we're going to talk about today. Now, there's more depending on who you look at. Um, there's less depending on which model you follow. But um, today we're going to talk about five that are just generally accepted. Um, if you want to read more about it, at the end we have, like I said, these resources where you can um, go and learn more about leaders, different types of leadership styles if you'd like to. Um, and also just one other, other thing is that you can't really fall into just one mold. Um, it's really up to you to develop your leadership style, and that's just going to depend on the situation you're in. Um, what's happening, but the five that we're going to talk about today are going to give you some ideas and set up some groundwork so that you can maybe try some different things if something's not working um, and see if a different leadership style works. So to get um, started on what your leadership style is, I don't know um, if everybody has a piece of paper, whiteboard, if you want to just memorize this in your head, but I have 10 questions that we're going to ask you. So you can either get out a piece of paper. Um, number it from 1 to 10, um, write it on the whiteboard, um, back of your hand, like we're in junior high, and you can put it on there. Um, but we have these 10 questions, and what I want you to do is we're going to um, go through these questions, and I just want you to rank them, um, just 1 to 5, okay? 1, not at all, 5, absolutely. Um, so as we go through, just number down your scores, okay? So the first question is, I like to know what's going on with my team members work at all times. So if that's absolutely you, mark a five. If that's not at all you, mark a one. And if you're in between, pick a number. Okay, number two. I tell my employees what needs to happen and they do it as requested. Okay. Number three. I involve my employees in every major decision. Okay, just pick a spot on that um, spectrum of not at all or absolutely. Number four, members of my team are empowered to make decisions. And if you're not running a team, you can probably think about your your manager <laughs> and what they do. I don't know if you want to go back to them and tell them all about their leadership style, but it's always an option. Um, number five, those who work with me define their own roles. Okay, so are those roles set by you or do you kind of let your team members define their position? Uh, number six, I prefer to assign a task and then leave my employees alone to do their work. Number seven, I prefer to be involved in the details. Okay, number eight, I use rewards and incentives to encourage my team to meet certain goals. It's like in grade school, the pizza party that we all work so hard for. Um, number nine, I clearly communicate my vision to my followers. So does your team know where you're going? Kind of, or not at all. They're just there to do their work. And number 10, my employees are creative, skilled, and easy to motivate. Okay, last one, one through five. Go ahead and mark that one down. Now, what I want you to do is <clears throat> I want you to add up every two, right? So Add up numbers one and two, you can write your score next to it. Mine was a four. Add up three and four, mine was a six. Add up five and six, mine is a nine. Add up seven and eight, 
mine was a two, and add up three or nine and ten, and mine was a seven. Okay, so go ahead. Sorry, I know that you didn't come here and expect to have to do math um, during a webinar, but it shouldn't be. Go ahead and just add those up. It shouldn't be too tough. Um, and what these are is again, this is very high level. What those ten questions related to are the five styles of leadership that we're going to talk today, talk about today. So that should give you some idea of where you fall within there. Um, again, how accurate is it? Uh, it'll give you a good enough idea for today. Um, if you're really excited about it, there's some pretty in-depth things to help you understand your personal leadership style. So here's my results, um, and there's the five leadership styles. Um, so the leadership styles that we're going to be talking about today are the authoritarian style, the democratic style, the laissez-faire style, the transactional style, and the transformational style. Okay, so we're going <laughs> to jump into each of those um, and talk through um, what that means, kind of where you would see that style used um, and how it's used. So let's jump into the first one. So <clears throat> the first one is the authoritarian style. Okay, in parentheses, dictator. <laughs> Sometimes um, that's what it's referred to, right? These are the people that dictate what happens. Um, they're very in control. They control and define all the activities um, really without input from the team. Okay? Um, my children would probably argue that that's how I parent. Um, that's not really how I am at work, but <clears throat> my children would probably say that I'm a dictator, and that's worked great until I got a 13-year-old, and now I think he's trying to overthrow the parental government. So I probably need to make some changes there on my um, parenting <laughs> leadership style. But um, in a corporate environment, again, it's just somebody that you could also call maybe a micromanager, where they kind of set up every step, and then they follow up on every step. Now, where do we see this? Well, you'll see this a lot in construction jobs. Again, we're speaking generalities. Um, you'll see this in manufacturing jobs, um, and you'll see these, this in the military. Um, it's found a lot in industries where there's basically little or no room for error. Okay? So we don't want somebody out there just doing their own thing. There's a specific steps um, that they need to follow. Um, so if we look at this um, for the uses and limitations, where is it effective? Well, it's effective when the employees are inexperienced or untrained, right? And then it makes sense because that manager or that leader needs to step in and make sure that these things are happening like they should. Um, it's good where you need an accurate solution or where the leader is the most knowledgeable person in that group um, and he knows how it needs to be done and why it needs to be done. Um, it can be used sometimes if you have a short deadline um, and you just need to get something done quick and you're just like, look, this is what you're going to do. Um, here's how you're going to do it. Um, and I'm going to follow up with you every two minutes until it gets done, right? And then the last one is if there's specific laws or procedures in your line of work that need to be followed, um, you'll see this a lot. Um, you know, if there's compliance things, um, you know, we talk about construction um, and there's different um, things that have to be met as they're building buildings or roads or whatever um, that are pretty specific um, that have to be met. Now, <clears throat> the downfalls of this, um, if you have a highly team train or highly trained team um, that is creative and this style is not really going to work um, if you're trying to tell them exactly what you want them to do. I mean, the idea of a creative team is they're um, out there coming up with ideas, not you dictating what happens. Um, it's also not good for high employee morale, generally, um, because nobody really likes to be told what to do all the time. So if it's used incorrectly, um, it can actually lead to people not showing up for work. It can be uh, people being afraid of you, and you, you don't really want that as, your, as a manager, and just trust within the organization. So if you are using this style, um, it's important to remember that you need to be able to explain the rules, um, that you need to be consistent um, in how you're doing this, and you need to be respectful of your employees. And a lot of that is, even though with this style you're not necessarily taking the feedback from your team, um, but with this style you're listening to it and respecting them as individuals, um, even if you're not able to implement that. Okay? So that's our authoritarian style, our dictators that are out there telling people how every single step needs to be done. Okay? Our next style is the democratic style, um, also called the participative or participative, depending on how you want me to say it. Um, so in this one, 
all of the team members come together to make a decision. Okay? So everybody comes together, they all make a decision, and really the leader's there just to facilitate that conversation. Um, if you've ever been to a brainstorming session, um, something like that, this is basically a democratic style of leadership where you're taking input from everybody. Um, a lot of times you'll see this in the creative industry with your advertising marketing firms, um, consulting firms, and then in the education industry, um, which I guess you could argue <laughs> a couple ways about that. But um, in that industry, you know, just getting feedback from peers um, and everybody together. So um, our democratic style um, is effective I mean, if there's time for discussion, right? So if you don't have a tight deadline, um, it's bring people in, get that feedback, um, go through that. Um, it's also if the leader doesn't mind taking ideas from other people. Um, if you're just doing this as an exercise and then you're going to choose your own idea, it's probably not going to work that well um, in the end. Um, it works really well when you have highly trained, or trained staff, um, and it works really well uh, you know, if there's complex problems to be solved, right? If I can't do this myself and I bring in a lot of other people, we can sit down and work this out. Um, and it also works pretty well in a fast-moving organization, and that's because there's so much change in those organizations that you need these ideas from everybody to keep things going and, and moving and evolving. Um, the downfalls, again, tight deadlines. This is usually a longer process. You know, you um, have your website designed and then you show it to 10 people and wish you hadn't because <laughs> every single one of them wants to change something on that. Um, you, it doesn't work well with inexperienced team members because you're asking for input about something that they may not understand. And along with that is if you have a broad decision that's going to affect a lot of people, um, but you don't bring in enough experienced people, it's not going to work because you're not going to be able to make an effective decision that is going to pertain to everybody in that organization. Okay? So I'm going to take a little break right now and just get a drink of water, um, and then we'll come back and we'll, we'll do the next three. So I'm going to hand it over to Kat for just a second. Um, let me get a drink of water, and then we'll jump into the next one. Kat? All right. Thanks so much, Mark. Well, we have literally dozens of courses available from InSpark in our marketplace. And I'll be emailing everyone information about them, along with a 30% discount later today to use yourself, or feel free to share it with any colleagues who are not able to attend today's event. Also, if you have a specific training need, feel free to email Pia or myself. Hopefully you captured our email addresses. And uh, we'll send you some recommendations and solutions. Mark, back to you. All right. <clears throat> Thanks, Kat. Got my drink of water, took my power nap, we're, uh, we're good to go for the, uh, for the next three. So this next one, now if you remember my list, um, this is, this, well, was and is my leadership style. And it's the laissez-faire style, um, hands off, right? <clears throat> so with this, you have team members who have complete freedom to make decisions and to go and get things done. Um, and the leader's there to provide resources and support or consult if they're not quite sure about something. But generally, you take a step back and just let your team do their thing. Um, you'll find this a lot in upper level management um, because as the owner of a company, you want the people below you to make those decisions. You can't be involved in every decision making process. And you'll also see it when you have highly skilled teams, okay, where, you know, and also maybe with contractors, right? If you use contractors, you probably don't dictate what they do every second. You tell them what needs to be done and then let them go and figure out how it needs to be done. Now there's some <clears throat> problems with this leadership style. Um, well, I guess I should start with the pros of this leadership style. Um, and that is if your employees are highly trained, um, then this is really motivating for them. Um, they really value that. Um, and it works really well, like I said, with consultants that are being used. Um, and it works, too, if the group members are more, are more knowledgeable than the leader. And, you know, they say hire, hire people that are smarter than you. And I know that a lot of times when we're trying to figure something out, I turn to my team and say, hey, you, know, you guys know this better than me. What do we do? Um, and, again, it works well if the leader is willing to provide the feedback that the team needs. Where does it not work? When used with new employees. Um, that's a pretty rough transition to come into a company 
you can have somebody just say, all right, just figure it out and do your thing, right? Um, it doesn't work well if your um, employees lack time management skills. Um, so if they're not able to effectively manage themselves, it's not going to work well. And that doesn't really matter necessarily how smart they are. Um, it's just they're not able to manage their time correctly. Um, it can lead to a lack of cohesiveness in the team um, if the leader is completely uninvolved, right? We talked a little bit about how you still have to give feedback to your team. You still need to be there. But if you're completely uninvolved, uh, the team starts to become disengaged as well. Um, and it can lead to poorly defined roles within the group because with this, everybody's kind of picking their own role and doing their own thing. So back to my employees at the beginning, um, when I <clears throat> went through the course and I realized that I was this super cool hands-off manager who just kind of let his employees do their thing and they got the work done and we were happy and um, it was lots of fun that it wasn't working for my new employee, right? Um, and new employees are on there, and that's because, think about when you go into an organization. Um, there's a lot that you're trying to figure out, how they want things done, um, the way things work, you know, how their systems and processes work. And so I brought in this new guy and basically just said, all right, there's your task, do it. <laughs> and it was really frustrating because he didn't have the foundation um, to understand what needed to happen, and he got really frustrated with that. So <clears throat> I made some changes, and basically started initially with more of the authoritarian style. So I became a dictator just for him. Um, and basically when he came in, I was like, hey, you know, here's the new project. Here's what I want you to do step by step. This is kind of how it needs to be done. Here's what you need to accomplish this task. Let's talk again tomorrow, right? Um, and I was able to help him get to where he understood the things that he needed to know. Um, and, and he really excelled with that and started doing really well. And it's interesting because he got to where my management style of lazy affair worked for him. Uh, um, you know, as we went along, it worked for him in the end. And so, um, it, but it took, it was a process to get him there, to get him to the point where he trusted me and where he was motivated and went on. So happy ending to the story. Um, well, I guess long-term sad any because most of those guys don't work with us anymore, but people move on. Um, so our next one is the transactional leadership style, also known as managerial. Um, so the way that this works is you motivate your team, how? Through a series of rewards, right, or punishments, okay? So um, you dangle the carrot out in front of them so that they'll go out and um, meet their meet their goals. Um, the focus is on uh, supervision, so you're supervising the t whole team, but it's all about the group performance, right? So it's not necessarily, yes, individuals you can do this with, but um, it's all about getting the group overall to perform how you need them to and doing that through, um, through these series of rewards or incentives. Um, where it's found, a lot of times you'll see this with sales teams, um, if they meet their sales goal for the month. Um, see this a lot with call centers where, you know, if you close so many or make your dials for the day or you're the top whatever, um, you will get, you know, your gift card. And of course the last one, um, vegetable farms. Um, I think everybody's like, oh yes, obviously um, this is used on vegetable farms. Now the reason I put that one down there is because when I was 14, uh, my first job was picking beans, hence the picture on a vegetable farm, right? So 14 year old kid went out um, to pick beans, didn't really want to, um, but my parents thought it would build character. Uh, so I went out to uh, this farm every day over the summer to um, pick beans. <laughs> and the, I got there and found out, you know, the first day I just kinda picked and at the end of the day I found out that if you picked a certain amount of beans, and they were measured in pounds, so a, a certain number of pounds of beans, you got a can of pop. And for a 14-year-old kid, that was like that was like the top thing, right? A can of soda. If I pick this many beans, this is this is amazing, right? Generic soda probably cost them like 15 cents a can. Well, the next day, I was determined that I was going to get that can of soda, and so I still didn't get it the second day. It took me a little while, um, but I got to be the number two bean picker there, um, and it was totally this transactional style, right? 
um, overall, they needed to meet certain goals with, I guess, how many boxes of beans they filled up. But for me, that was really something that I was just trying to reach that goal every day. So that's why we have vegetable farms on there and my fond memories of working for a can of pop. And <laughs> when you met your quota, you probably made about $2 an hour. So for a 14-year-old kid, hey, I can complain. Um, where is this effective? Generally with short-term projects, if you want to use it in a corporate environment, a lot of times we'll have a deadline we have to meet, something coming up, so we'll incentivize the team. Hey, finish this up and we'll go to a movie on Friday or um, we have a goal to hit 500 new dials this month in the call center and when we get that done, you know, we'll do our pizza party. Um, with this, um, it's effective, like I say, if you have to maintain the status quo, meaning that there's a certain number that you need to hit every day, you know, and you're not getting close, you raise your incentives or you put dangle more carrots out front. Um, and again, on this, the group performance is the focus. Um, downfalls to this is it doesn't really work with knowledge-based or creative work. So, I, I mean, I guess you could tell a designer that if they can design 10 websites in 10 hours, they'll get something, but it's not generally going to work very well. Um, and it's also not that great when job satisfaction is important. Um, now, why is that? Well, a lot of times this is used, I don't want to say that people don't necessarily enjoy those jobs. Did I necessarily like picking beans? No. Was it really a fulfilling job? Not really. <laughs> job satisfaction wasn't the goal there. Uh, the goal was to a, earn money and get my can of pop at the end of the day, and that's how it works with um, some of these others is um, you're really just there to help them meet their goal and their quota, okay? Um, now, our last one is our transformational leaders. So these are our charismatic leaders. Um, you know, if you um, think about, you know, some different leaders out there, I'm sure everybody can think of somebody who they would consider to be this transformational or this, this charismatic leader who leads by inspiring, right? You're empowering your team, you're inspiring them um, to greater things, they kind of rally around you um, and get excited about your vision and what the future is. Um, for this one, um, this style of leadership is hard to teach because it's based more around personality traits. Um, it's based more around somebody's um, ability to motivate other people to action, okay? So where do we find this? Um, if you think about different leaders of companies, um, a lot of CEOs are these transformational leaders. Um, I'm not. I'm lazy affair, right? <laughs> I just let my people do their thing, and we're all happy. But, uh, but a lot of times at these big organizations, that's what you need. You need that person who inspires the team. Um, so they kind of like rally around you. Um, you'll see it in government officials, right? So, you know, if you think back to high school, um, how you had the student body president, a lot of times he was the most charismatic one and so everybody voted for him. Um, and you'll see it with motivational speakers, right? And that's their thing. That's their personality trait. They're able to go in, um, talk to people, and motivate them through, you know, being charismatic and and get them rallied around them. So that's really where we see it. Now, <clears throat> transformational, like I said, it's kind of hard to teach. Um, it's only effective if the person or the leader doing it is creative, charismatic, a really good communicator, um, big picture oriented, and motivating, right? So I guess I could try and be a charismatic leader, but if I'm not a motivating person and um, I'm not really a good communicator. It's hard for me to inspire and get my team rallied around me to do these things. Um, downfalls, um, a charismatic leader generally is big picture oriented, right? So they have the vision of where things need to go, but if they don't have the team to achieve those, his vision or goal or his or her vision or goal, um, it generally doesn't work. Um, and you need to be able to um, have the support or infrastructure in place to make those things happen. Um, and the other interesting thing about it is it's hard to teach, like I said, so when that leader leaves, it creates a gap in the organization because everybody was bought into that leader. Um, they were invested in that leader and when they leave, that kind of, there goes their 
motivation or <laughs> there goes their um, reason that you know they were bought in and following um, is when that person leaves, right? Um, so that's that's our five leadership styles. Those are the five that we wanted to go over today. Um, so again, authoritarian, democratic, laissez-faire, transactional, and transformational. Um, and there's kind of a summary of what each one is. Um, now, now that we've kind of had a chance to go through, um, everybody take a deep breath, wake up. We, uh, we're we're getting there. We still have a few more things to talk about because now that we understand each of these, we can talk about now what are some things I should think about if I want to make a change, right? So for making a change, oh, fish knife. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> I don't know if this poor goldfish on the screen here um, doesn't look excited about the change that he's making. Um, but when we're making our change, um, one of the things that you should probably do before you do anything else is take some time to evaluate the leadership styles of others, right? Um, look around and see how other people are leading. Uh, maybe get some ideas of what's effective for them, um, what's working for them. Uh, you know, talk to people if they're in a similar situation or position um, to figure out kind of what's working. Um, the other thing that you want to do is evaluate yourself, right? How do you respond to each of these leadership styles? Um, and I can think of an instance pretty much with all of them when that's how I've either been led or managed um, on a team. So it's kind of an introspective thing, right? You kind of need to think through how you respond to these because that may make a difference of how you decide that you um, want to implement it into your team. Um, the other one is don't change leadership style overnight. Um, generally not a good idea to go in and just shake everything up and change everything. Um, I actually did this once um, and it was a bad idea but it wasn't <laughs> a corporation. So if you think about um, the school classroom environment, right? Um, how do teachers lead their class or manage these students, if you will, right? A lot of times it's um, the authoritarian style where the teacher tells them what needs to be done, the students do it, <laughs> and everybody's happy, right? They get good grades based on whether they fall in line or not. Well, I, um, I was asked to be an adjunct professor at one of the universities out here. Um, they needed somebody to come teach the intro programming class. So I said I would, um, mostly because I wanted to go out and kind of get a feel for maybe who we wanted to recruit <laughs> when they graduated, um, kind of get to know some of the students and things, um, because we were, we were trying to build um, a good team of, of people um, who were graduating, kind of entry level at that point. So I went out to teach this class, and um, again, teaching, uh, very authoritarian style, um, especially um, at some of the lower levels, but even at the college level. I mean, you, you have some more freedom in some classes, but, but again, it's just the, the, the students expect the teacher to tell them exactly what needs to be done, right? Well, midterm was coming up um, for this programming class. I didn't have a lot of time to <laughs> come up with a midterm assignment, um, and so <clears throat> I fell back to my um, laissez-faire ways and decided that for the assignment for the students in that class, the assignment was simply this, build me something. Okay, so I had them all come in. I'm like, okay, I'm going to hand out. This is, you know, these are, this is what you have to do for your midterm. And all it said was build me something on it. And everybody was like, wait, what? I was like, look, we've been in this class for oh, two months. Um, just take the knowledge that you've learned and just build me something. Well, <clears throat> When you <laughs> change a leadership style or throw in kind of a curveball like that, you have some people panic, um, which several of them did. They didn't know how to handle this, right? In a school setting for a midterm, which is generally you know a bigger project, um, a lot of these students just didn't know what to do. And I had so many come up to me, and they're just like, no, I just, what do you want? I was like, I want you to build me something. They're like, no, no, but what, what, does, what does it mean? And they would just... Um, so they panicked, and <clears throat> half the class probably hated me. Um, some people in the class loved me because they were like, wait, so you don't really care how much time we spend on this? We just have to build you something, right? I was like, yeah. So uh, some, some students thought it was fantastic. Anyway, um, after students panicking and sending me emails and, and uh, sending me projects to ask if it was okay and what I was looking for, we, we finally got to the midterm, and um, 
everybody in the class had turned something in. Um, but I learned a valuable lesson that you can't, <laughs> can't just throw a curveball, especially in a corporate environment. Um, if you go in and you try and change, um, think about if you kind of have this democratic style where you're getting input from everybody and then the next day you go in and you're like, okay, I'm now the dictator <laughs> and I'm going to tell everybody exactly what they need to do. Um, so anyway, in my school class, everybody got it turned in, everybody survived, it was a little bit painful, but uh, I went through all those and uh, we gave out awards for people that obviously spent hours and hours and hours on these midterm projects. Um, so I gave some awards for those, um, some for creativity, and <laughs> I gave out one award to the guy who did the absolute least um, and still got an A. Um, I don't, <laughs> hey, there's my... <clears throat> Um, there's my transactional leadership style a little bit there, but uh, I get one to him. I don't think you want to um, reward employees for doing nothing. Um, I mean, this this guy did something. He probably spent about 15 minutes, but he demonstrated his knowledge for the semester, right? So anyway, that uh, <laughs> don't don't incentive um, bad behavior, incentivize bad behavior. Um, so anyway, with for the final in that class, obviously I went back and outlined everything that needed to be done and everybody was happy again. So, sorry that was a long explanation, but again, don't change, you know, leadership style overnight. Um, it's just, it's not going to go well. Um, again, the last one is, you know, when we talk about leadership style, just understand that it should change and evolve. Um, your teams change, circumstances change, um, and you're going to need to change that to fit the dynamic of your team. So as you're considering your leadership style, what you may decide on now or some changes that you want to make now may be effective for some period of time. Um, but as things change, you may need to evolve and kind of change with that. All right. So now that everybody is so excited about leadership style, here's some resources um, <laughs> that you can go look at. Um, kind of um, some of the earlier ones, uh, the eight leadership styles based on the Jung or Myers-Briggs personality assessment. And what that was is that's really an introspective assessment that helps you understand how you see the world and how you make decisions. Um, there's, again, there's pros and cons to all of these, um, but that's one that you know people will talk about. Um, second one there is the four situational leadership styles defined by um, Hersey and Blanchard. Um, and that one has styles, it's like S1 to S4. Okay, um, and then they kind of pair those styles, those four styles, with four levels of maturity. So it's it's this um, situational leadership style um, where you're kind of pairing a style with how mature a group is. Um, and uh, Blanchard, he actually wrote the uh, One Minute Manager. So I don't know if anybody's read that book. Interesting little book about the the One Minute Manager. But he he also helped develop this um, situational leadership style. Um, the next one, the five leadership styles from the managerial grid model. So they don't really call it the managerial grid model. That's outdated now. Um, but it was originally developed in the 60s, and it's just been updated. Again, most of these evolve over time. This one's been updated now. It has seven styles, um, and a lot of times you'll hear it called uh, the power to change. They go out and they'll do presentations on the power to change, and it's based off of the original managerial grid model with a couple extras in there. And then the last one is the five components of emotional intelligence. Um, and Daniel Goleman wrote a book in 1995 called Emotional Intelligence. Um, he is an author. He's a psychologist. He's written all sorts of books and articles and things. But he came up with that model that's kind of evolved, too, um, with emotional intelligence. So anyway, if you're interested in any of those, there's some links there. Most of them just will take you out so you can see them on Wikipedia or get a general idea of what they are and what they do. Um, but that's about, that's about it on leadership styles from, uh, from me today. Um, you know, we, we went through, we were able to at least hopefully figure out what your leadership style was or kind of where you lean, um, lean to. And then um, hopefully as we went through, you were able to make some notes and understand, you know, where you're at. Um, <laughs> what may be working for you, what may not be working for you. Um, you know, if you're um, a laissez-faire um, leadership style and you're trying to manage um, a bunch of kids in a call center, that's probably not going to work, right? So hopefully you got some ideas um, of just generally how, how that all fits together. Again, there's books written on probably each of these. 
um, and papers and all sorts of things. There's a lot of information on this, and there's a lot, a lot of it changes <laughs> over time. But um, it's really good in understanding how people work um, and how you can work with them to create your teams um, and have a better work environment, hopefully for everybody. And I'm hopefully as you do these things as well, that you'll start to see the change within your teams. Um, that as you make some change, you know, you'll realize that sometimes the change is not necessarily that your team's not performing or that there's problems there, that there's problems with the management style. Um, and that's what I've seen personally <laughs> as I've had to manage people that it's kind of come back to me, right? I've been the one that's needed to make change in a lot of those situations and um, generally it helps. Now, sometimes it doesn't help. Um, <laughs> we have a fantastic course on employee discipline. If you uh, if it's not working, leadership style is not the problem. We have other courses to help you. But uh, um, anyway, I appreciate everybody coming out and listening to me just ramble on about leadership style um, and go over those. Um, it's question and answer time, so I'm going to turn it back over to Kat. Um, let her kind of facilitate that. But you're welcome to ask me. Anything about leadership style, hopefully I know the answer. You can ask me or just anything about myself and Spark, my 14-year-old bean-picking strategy to become number two, <laughs> whatever whatever interests you. So Kat, I'm going to turn it back to you. All righty, great. Thank you so much, Mark. Yeah. All right, so if anyone has any questions that you wanted to present to Mark, there is a chat feature on your GoToMeeting panel on the right side toward the bottom. So just go ahead and put your questions in there, and then I'll read them out to Mark, and uh, he'll be more than happy to answer those for you. Uh, Mark, one question did come in during the, uh, during the event, so I'll just go ahead and read that first one now. Sure. With the individuals, do you find a leadership style that works and stick with it, or does it change over time? Okay, so they're <clears throat> sounds like they're asking um, for each individual. Do I pick like one style and just stick with it? Is that kind of that's what, um, that's what it sounds like? I know so what it sounds like to me too. Yep. <laughs> okay. So yeah, um, I, I I would say no. I mean, generally, what happens is. I mean, for me, is we kind of move through some leadership styles. So if we're talking about employees, when that employee starts, again, like we kind of start with that, that dictatorship style. When somebody shows up the first day, you know, at Spark, we try and have that entire day planned out for them, what they're going to do. But then we want to move them along to more of a hands-off approach. Um, that's for us. You know, with some people, they don't move along. And that's, there is one leadership style that they stick with. But generally, we see that things evolve. Um, and as people become more skilled and more knowledgeable, um, you need to adjust your style for those people so that um, you can kind of better meet their needs as they um, become better and more skilled employees. All right, great, thank you. Um, let's see, there's one other question here. What if none of these leadership styles work with an individual? <laughs> That's a good question um, <clears throat> because um, they might not work. I mean, you might try and change your leadership style to help an individual, um, and it may not be necessarily leadership style. And so at that point, you need to start kind of evaluating, you know, what, what else could be the issue here? If it's not how I'm managing this person, is it that um, what could it be on their end? Where Are they lacking some skill sets um, in some certain places that – you know, are either causing problems or making it difficult for them. And, and sometimes it's out of your control. I mean, it could be personal things as well for that person as well. <clears throat> so you can stay, I generally will just stay out of that. But uh, um, it, it might not work. But it's a good place to start. And, and in general, um, it's, you know, a good way to um, understand and manage your teams. Um, it's a good foundation to kind of work from and then adjust as you need to. All right, great. Okay, so again, if you have any questions that you wanted to present to Mark, feel free to enter those onto the chat feature of your GoToMeeting panel on the right. Uh, I know we do have some, some people that have logged in as groups, so I know that's a little bit more difficult. So if anyone wanted to just go ahead and email us afterwards, um, again, you can email uh, myself at cat at cogno.com, that's cat with a K. Or feel free to, to email our training consultant, Pia, at Pia at Cogno.com. So that's P-I-A at Cogno.com. 
and uh, we'll be sure to get uh, get your questions over to Mark and, and that we can email you those answers. Uh, just one final question looks like it's in and then we can go ahead and conclude unless there's uh, nothing else. How, how do we get more leadership style or training, I'm sorry, how do we get more leadership training? Um, no, that's a great question. Um, for <laughs> for leadership training, you know, I mean, um, there's a lot of different styles and, and methodologies out there. But you know, if you use Cogno alone, um, there's lots of courses out there on leadership style. Um, there's lots of courses out there on becoming better managers and leading up. And we offer some of those if you want to go look at our courses. Um, um, we have a bunch, kind of a leadership series that could help you with that. And then there's others out there. I mean, there's seminars and things that, that people provide. So if this is something that you're interested in, again, I give you some resources um, to kind of learn about leadership style. If you want to go back and look at those. And then there we you know, have all these other resources available as well if uh, people want to go out and check those out as well. All right, excellent. Um, Kat, I don't know if we lost you, but I can't I can't hear you right now. Hi, this is Pia. I, um, I'm not sure if uh, we lost Kat. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, Mark, we do have um, another question here. Um, how do we, how do you get them to change uh, their style? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> um, <laughs> how do we get how do we get managers to change their style? Um, you know, and again, um, this is going to go into a conversation about feedback. But if you see managers that have a style that you recognize isn't working for that team, um, it's it's going to come down to training and um, giving them feedback on that style, and that's a hard thing to do. Um, sometimes it's just to go and tell somebody, "Hey, <laughs> I don't think this is working," um, but. Uh, you know, for me, nobody had to come and tell me it wasn't working. It was something I kind of discovered myself. So um, you could always make a mandatory leadership style course <laughs> available out there. But again, like it's it's having those tough conversations and giving that feedback. Um, and again, there's a couple courses out there on giving feedback, and we have some courses on receiving feedback too um, that kind of walk through how to give and receive feedback and, and help people facilitate some of that change. I mean, change is, change is not easy, let's be honest. Um, but it's just kind of these little steps and things that evolve along the way. So that's all I can say is start with giving them some feedback um, and then move on from there. Awesome. All right. And another question. What are the titles of those courses? I think um, okay. he's referring to the <laughs> courses that you mentioned a while ago that's available in our marketplace, I guess. Yeah, so if you actually you just go out and search NSPARK, so E-N-S-P-A-R-K, and we have, um, I think right now we have about 32 courses on the Cogno platform, and we have about eight more that will um, load up. Um, but there are some on, there's one called Managing Up. There's obviously leadership styles out there, um, and a lot of what I talked about today comes directly from the leadership style course. Um, there are some others on, you know, an effective leader's guide to all sorts of things, time management and managing teams and things like that. And then there are two courses out there. One is a leader's guide to giving feedback. And then another one, a uh, leader's guide to receiving feedback are some of them that are out there um, amidst a whole, whole bunch of others. Most of the NSPARC courses focus on um, management and leadership, <clears throat> so those two. And then employee improvement. So if you're trying to help your employees get better at 
giving meetings, or <laughs> I mentioned the dining etiquette, which was something we we did so that um, our millennials would put away their phones when meeting with clients. <laughs> no offense, millennials, kids that work for us, but um, so we did that. Um, we have some on email etiquette and these different things, and then we have some compliance courses if you're interested in that. And those are your you know your HR oriented stuff, you know, sexual harassment, um, uh, compliance, internet policies, things like that. But yeah, just go search and spark in the marketplace. All right. Okay. I do not have uh, more questions for you here, uh, Mark. So yeah, thank you, Mark. That was a, a very informative session. I enjoyed it <laughs> personally. I'd like uh, we'd like to thank um, everyone again for attending today's webinar. Be on the lookout for the email that um, we'll be sending later today. And uh, feel free to email me or Kat at info at Cogno.com with any questions about training courses available or partnering with Cogno. And have a nice day, everyone. Thank you again, Mark. Yeah, no problem. Thanks. Bye.